course, are you ready for an adventure of a lifetime? Then join me as we go on a journey in Morocco and you'll discover the wonders of the Sahara Desert. What's up, welcome back. And in today's episode of Adventures with Amar, I'm gonna be talking through my journey through the vast and breathtaking landscapes across the UNESCO heritage sites, the Atlas Mountains, beautiful sunsets through the, the sand dunes and many more things. So my journey began with a flight from the UK to the bustling city of Marrakesh, where I was joined by my friends who have been on the coast surfing in Azoria. We drove into the center of the Red City where we were immediately immersed by the vibrant colors, enticing aromas and lively atmosphere, the things that make Marrakesh truly special. There were plenty of narrow streets, winding alleyways, busy souks filled with people and also beautiful architecture. So you can go and get lost and go explore, which is really fun. After spending an afternoon in the markets baked in a heat wave, we rewarded ourselves with a unique flavoured gelato coupled with amazing views on the rooftop terrace of the restaurant Noma. This was followed by an entertaining evening at the restaurant Da Moha. We were treated to a five course tasting menu which included succulent meat and fish and also a medley of vegetables which was delightful. It was nice to relax by the pool with the live music in the background and also filling ourselves up for the big desert tour tomorrow. We woke up bright and early for our desert tour and we were greeted by our driver Salah. As we drove away from the Red City the views transformed to landscapes of the Atlas Mountains and lush palm groves. We stopped periodically to grab some fresh air and also take in the picturesque views we stopped off at a restaurant where all the different travellers were gathered around and it was nice to hear from others about their stories around their trips in Morocco as well. After our meal, we were guided through some buildings towards a river bank. There was a bridge that was across what would have been the stream and then on the other side we saw this encompassing, unbelievable view. This is Saar of Eight Ben Hadou, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Saar meaning fortified village by the Berber people. It's believed that this village dates back to the 11th century and it's still inhabited by five to ten families that still live there. The bridge was only constructed recently and so people used to have to walk all the way along the riverbank to find a bridge which was eight kilometers away to then come to this other side of the riverbank where we were standing. To our surprise we were told that we were going to be climbing all the way up to the top of the village which was not what we were expecting given that we had just had lunch and it's really hot. But as we climbed up the village we were rewarded by the increasingly dramatic views of the village and the landscape. This UNESCO World Heritage Site has been used as a backdrop for multiple TV series and films such as The Mummy, Gladiator and Game of Thrones. We even saw the stadium that was being built for the filming of Gladiator 2. As we went through some narrow cave, eventually we made it to the top. There was the myriad of buildings in the distance, the sky contrasting the rocks, the light and the dark, the old and the new. It was almost like we were stepping back in time and feeling like we were in one of those movies. On our way down, we entered another cave, which we found out to be a man's store. This man was a painter. He showed us that many centuries ago, these types of drawings were used to secretly communicate between parties and that they could only be found out by special means. We continued our road adventure through the Atlas Mountains. And as the sun set, we made it into the town of Tangier. There was a hotel which was ready for us and they swiftly provided us our accommodation, our rooms. And after freshening up, we then got some grub. It was supposed to be an early night because it was an early start, but we ended up playing cards and having a nice drink by the pool. Breakfast was served with a pleasant view with the lush palm groves and the mountains in the distance. After indulging on some tasty pastries, we grabbed our bags and we set off for the big day. Today is the day that we would see the sand dunes and go on that sunset camel ride. But before we did, we went on a different adventure. With all of us half asleep, we weren't paying too much attention as the bus suddenly stopped. Salah opened the door and entered a really tall and slim Moroccan man. This man was our tour guide and called himself Couscous. We stopped in a local village of which Couscous wanted to take us on a tour of. This is where we learn about the Berber people and met a few of them as well. The Berbers are an indigenous ethnic group native to North Africa, including Morocco. Almost three in 10 Moroccans are actually Berber people, and many of these Berbers would live nomadic lifestyles in the Atlas Mountains and the Sahara Desert. They have a rich history and culture, which dates back thousands of years, predating the Arab conquest of the region. It was interesting and eye-opening to see how they lived from having women who'd carry large amounts of crops and alpha alpha on their backs to being showcased the rugs and carpets that were famous in the region 
and showing the intricate details behind how they were made. We also provided a sweet glass of fresh mint tea, which went down well as well. We continued to walk through the trees, through the small streets, and which led us onto the open road again. It was blistering in heat, and as we walked down the road, we were led to a dead end. It turns out that we were surrounded by high cliffs and we were standing at the bottom of a gorge, which was breathtaking. And we also got to meet another local. We said bye to Couscous and were one step closer to the sand dunes. We made frequent stops throughout the trip and then at one of the stores, I was able to buy a scarf, which we needed for the Sahara Desert. As we continued to drive, we saw it for the first time. In the distance were the golden hills that we were looking for. It was truly surreal being surrounded by the Sahara Desert. We waved goodbye to our familiar bus and were introduced to a new form of transport, a camel ride. Guskus the tour guide did mention that in the Berber culture that the firstborn son would be called Muhammad and that the firstborn daughter would be called Fatima. Given that my camel was at the front of the pack, I named mine Muhammad. Muhammad was a very friendly camel, but some of the other ones were slightly more erratic. Once we were swiftly abroad, it was time to go over the hump. It sounded better when I wrote it. Just show the views. The rich blue skies contrasting with the sand dunes was ideal. The only sound that could be heard were the steps from our fairy friends. As we took in the views, we made our way to the top of one of the sand dunes where we paused and took a break. We took this opportunity to do something cool, and that was to go sandboarding. I'd never been before, so this was quite fun to do. Though I must warn that going down was a lot easier than going back up. After making our way back up, we soaked in the last rays of the golden hour. I also wanted to give a huge credit and shout out to the locals who supported us throughout this journey because it was also Ramadan during this period. And once the sun set, we saw that they sat as a group and broke their fast together, which was really sweet to see. We hopped back onto our camels and as the sky turned from red to blue to black, we continued trotting to our desert camp. Staying at the desert camp was an interesting experience. As we got closer, you could see these huts popped up in different areas. Each hut would be for one or two people to stay in. As we got, got to the center of the desert camp, there was a campfire surrounded by benches and logs around. Once we freshened up, our host greeted us for dinner. We shared more stories over dinner, ate the local tagine, and collectively the group sang for someone because it was their 40th birthday. After the meal, the fire was lit and we gathered around the campfire. A few musicians and drummers also popped up as well. The music started off quite slow and then as the night progressed, it got faster and faster and included dancing with everybody getting up. As a kid, I used to play the doubler, which are Indian drums, and so I got a chance to play these drums and they were quite fun to do as well. Whilst the music was fun, we had date plans to go stargazing out back in the desert. And this time around, it was an even more intimate experience. We grabbed our cameras and planned to get a really good picture of the sand dunes with the stars in the background. But the moon was out and it's really bright, so it did create some noise pollution. So getting that picture of the stars was quite difficult. But what was most amazing was just being surrounded by the silence, the stars and the sand. We ended up trekking a lot further than we expected. And by the time we got back, our boots were filled with sand. The music had stopped, the lights were out, and that meant it was the end of the night. There was only one last wake up call on this tour, and this was the one where it was most worth it. After breakfast, we packed our bags and made it back onto the camels. The sun hadn't risen yet and we were already on the go. Some wanted to ride on the ATVs, but I was pretty happy with the classical route. It was a treasure to be able to witness both the sunset and sunrise in the Sahara Desert. The glow from the sun hitting the dunes were the real highlight for me. After our trip, we made our way back to Marrakesh from the way we came and we dined at a really nice Lebanese restaurant called Azar, which I would highly recommend. It's been a while since I visited a country outside of Europe and the US, and so it was nice to be on unfamiliar terrain. I'm not usually someone that goes on a tour, but I was incredibly impressed by how much they packed in into three days. Although the main highlight in the Sahara Desert was just one day, there were still some interesting experiences we had across the different areas of the days as well. And I believe that if you want to see some of the best things in the world, you then have to invest the right time to be able to go see them properly. We booked our tour with Viator and I'll try and find the link and put it below in the description box. And if you enjoyed this video, then do give it a like below. If there's one person I have to give a special shout out to on this trip, it was our driver Salah for his 20 plus hours of driving alone and also for his continuous epic song choices and disco raves that he held whilst on the bus. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it in future, then do subscribe to my channel and until then, see you next time.